Hey, everybody. Welcome to a new episode of Walk in Faith. I'm excited to be sitting down with Jessica Nicole Mondonado. And what's interesting is everyone that knows me knows that I love sight and sound. I love Lancaster, Pennsylvania, which I was just there last week with my son. We're actually feeding goats. But it's one of my favorite places to go. And a few years ago, prior to the pandemic, I was invited to sight and sound to watch Queen Esther, where I met Jessica. And that was the night. I think it was family and friends night. And Jessica did what an amazing performance. And I interviewed Jessica and, and everyone on the cast. And they made this announcement at the end of that performance saying they'd be closed for two weeks. And it was a lot longer than two weeks, as we know. But Jessica and I remained in contact. And I'm excited to be sitting down with Jessica today. So, Jessica, thank you so much for this opportunity to just chat. Thank you for having me. Oh, it's my pleasure. So, so tell me, I mean, that was, I don't even know how to explain that night, but it was, uh, I can't imagine what it was for you. I know for us to be sitting there and, and being part of that amazing performance and then hearing that announcement, what was it like for you? If you could just take us back to, what was that? It was that three, four years ago already? Yes. Wow. Yes. <laughs> Unbelievable. Yes. It, it's, it's been, it's been a while, but honestly, it feels like it was yesterday. Um, we, I, I remember um, the announcement being made that we were, we were going to be shutting down. And I, I think we all kind of looked at each other like, is this real? Like, is this really happening? Um, because Queen Esther was, uh, um, at that time, it was one of the biggest shows they'd done. Like set pieces were massive and the costumes were just beautiful. Like, like so beautiful meticulously detailed and there was so much work that went behind it so to be told all right we're stopping everything um it was it was confusing I think that's the only word that I can describe personally for me because I really felt like the Lord had called me to this role um two or three years prior to opening the show the Lord really put on my heart um that you know, I was going to do this part, which sounds crazy, but um, I knew that the Lord was calling me to do this. So it kind of felt like, all right, Lord, you called me to do this thing and now it's being shut down. Um, so yeah, confused would be the word. <laughs> and um, so during the time that we were shut down, um, the Lord was really working on my heart. I feel like during the rehearsal season um, for doing Queen Esther, maybe I wasn't in the right heart posture. Um, I was trying to do everything in my own strength. Mm -hmm. I was trying to, you know, be the best vocalist, be the best actress. Um, as a woman, we, I mean, men and women have the same thing, but I feel like it's more, um, prominent with women, you know, feeling self-conscious about how I looked and, um, all of these different things. And I wasn't really wrapping my identity in being a child of God. I was wrapping my identity in being the role of Queen Esther. And, I don't, I don't, I'm not saying like, there were a bunch of different reasons. I'm not saying that the Lord shut the whole world down for me, but it almost felt like that in that season, that it was just this moment of being forced to be still and, and do nothing, you know, cause we were all doing nothing. We were at home. Um, and the Lord was just showing me all of the things that were more important than myself, <laughs> you mm -hmm. know, the pandemic and, and, and all of these things that were going on in the world. And I was going, wow, the, the world needs you, God. And, and I'm making this about me. Um, so the Lord really took me on a journey over the span of a few months before we opened back up later that year. And um, as, much, as, as much as it was uncomfortable and it was painful at times, I can honestly look back and say, wow, mm -hmm. I know that the Lord grew me for the better during that hard season. Oh, you're right. I mean, yeah, I think it was like a spiritual sort of reset because for me too, I was I was transitioning from one position to building this other company. And I've always prayed for a stronger relationship with Jesus, right? But I didn't know how to do it. And then I had that time and I just started using that time to get in deeper in his word and interview people and really, and I developed this this sort of stronger relationship with Jesus Christ. And 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 I can look in, like similar to what you said. I don't think it was specifically for me, but I think there are a lot of people that 
were searching for something, right? And I think this sort of this time off, this pandemic, the COVID sort of gave them that time to just be still and to really reflect on what's truly important. I wrote an article about sacrifice because prior to that, I was traveling mm -hmm. all over the place. I was constantly traveling. And I was like, well, God, this is, this is really what you called me to do. And then after really reflecting on that, I said, no, this is what I want to do. I was feeding the flesh and not feeding the spirit. And that time allowed me to really reflect and say, this is not a sacrifice. This is selfish. And I think a lot of us really felt that. And and I remember I was interviewing, um, I think I don't know, I don't remember his name, but he was in the he was in the play Queen Esther. And he was so excited because his mom was there. And his mom told me, I bought a season tickets and I'm gonna come. And she was she hasn't she didn't see him that often. And she was so excited. And I remember at the end, I felt terrible for her because this was her opportunity to see her son in the performance, but also to build that bond. And she was getting very personal. And it, it's, it really was, like you said, very confusing. But I think, like you said, the Lord really used this time to speak to your heart. So what was it like when you went back and how long did it take for you guys to go back to Sight and Sound? Um, I believe we opened up in late summer I wouldn't have the right month but it was about three or four months that we were completely shut down we ended up going back and taking a lot of unnecessary precautions and stuff like that um but when the, the cast came back it was really this sense of like one appreciation for you know even by the end of the rehearsal process you're so tired and you're like okay we're ready for this thing to just open um, so I think it made a lot of people really appreciate that we were there because we didn't have it for four months. Um, and, and quite honestly, people were th thinking like, we're never going to open back up, you know? Um, so when we got back, there was a sense of appreciation for what we were doing, but also a sense of, wow, this is bigger than us mm -hmm. because we were literally singing songs. Be still and know that God is there. You know, you're not alone. All of these songs that people really needed in that season of 2020 um and then in 2021 as well so i mean we were able to do so many cool things through this process um things that we probably never would have thought of or done before the pandemic but because we were forced to um be creative we did our, our live stream and um i mean that alone reached over 150 plus um countries in the world. I mean, live streaming this beautiful story about this woman who's so courageous and standing up for her faith and standing up for her people. And we had people from India and, and, you know, everywhere. It was just so cool. Um, and, and the cast as a whole, the whole company, I think really stepped into, wow, okay, we are called to a higher calling right now because this is not just about us. Exactly. And and you said a couple of things that was so interesting, too. And, and I always think it's interesting. Prior to 2020, we called it the, the year of clarity, right? But we saw it as a different sort of from a different perspective. I didn't think of it from a religious standpoint. And then so now your emotional preparation must have, I mean, for you and the cast must have completely changed because and your performance probably improved a lot because prior to that, like you said, you were thinking about it from one perspective. And then during the pandemic, you started to have that sort of awakening, spiritual awakening. So then when you came back, was your performance any different from what from prior to the pandemic? Um, I. I would imagine so. I, it felt different to me. It felt more honest um, because, it, like I said, we were all in this situation where we were really leaning on the Lord, waiting on the Lord, feeling like we were alone, like pulled up in our in our houses and our apartments and everything. So um, it, it took on a whole new meaning. And then, like I said before, I feel like my mindset was more self focused. And then after the pandemic, when we came back, it was more kingdom focused. And honestly, I could not have done it without the Lord. There were, there were shows where, you know, I was exhausted. My voice was tired. Um, and, and, but I'm just the whole time keeping my eyes on the Lord. And, um, in fact, I would love to share this story. Um, yeah. there was a, there was a time, um, where I started to develop some really bad anxiety on stage. Um, and, you know, I'm trying to surrender every performance to the Lord, but, but it just felt like this spiritual attack, honestly, where I was so 
self-conscious about how I sounded and what I looked like and am I doing, am I good enough for this? And Lord, I'm trying to rely on you, but this is so difficult. And um, it, it almost felt like if I had stepped one foot on that stage, like if I'd done another show, I would have completely just like lost it is what it felt like to me. I was just almost, it was like, I was scared. I was scared to go out there and tell this story. And it was in the middle of one of the shows, I ended up having a panic attack and I couldn't even like really sing. Um, so we ended the first act and I went backstage, had to kind of collect myself. I prayed, I finished the show. And then in my mind, I'm like, there's no way I'm doing a second show today. Like I am not in the right headspace. I cannot do this. God, why, why did you choose me to do this? If you knew that I couldn't do this. And, um, my husband, he's amazing. He was working with me in the cast and um, such a supportive husband. I, I was telling him, look, I'm, I'm just gonna be done. I'm gonna take a break, have the understudy go in. Like, I can't do this. And he asked me this amazing question. I, I remember exactly where we were. And he said, are you not doing this show because you really need a break and you're tired? Or are you not doing this show because you're scared? And my response was, it's because I'm scared. Mm. And that's why I have to do it. Yeah. And it, it was so crazy. It was just like feeling that, you know, I'd been living in this character of Esther and she was so bold and so courageous. And, and in that moment, it felt like I kind of was impersonating that, that character of I'm scared. And so I have to do it because I know that I'm scared. Like God does not give us a spirit of fear. And that comes from something else. Yes. So I'm going to stand up against that fear and do it. And Craig, this show, and it was not me at all. At the end of the show, the whole entire audience stood up. And it wasn't they stood up and applauded. They stood up and they had their hands raised wow. up like they were praising the Lord. And I knew that was like a turning point for me. I knew, wow, God, your spirit is moving I'm a vessel. This whole cast is a vessel. And that's what I want out of every single show. And so that's kind of the posture that I took from that point on. And of course, I still had my days where I was felt those little bits of anxiety, but the Lord was so present through, wow. through the whole thing. Wow. I, I mean, I can, I'm getting emotional because I can relate to that on, on so many levels. And it's interesting too, when, whenever we pursue what God has placed in our heart, it's that voice comes, right? Constantly, and no matter how many accolades and trophies and awards and, and and people could just, you know, reassure you, reaffirm you, that voice is so powerful. And I've learned that too. What I start to do when I'm, I'm, I'm working on something that's way bigger than me, I don't think of the complexity of it. I think about just today, just this moment, because when I start to sort of think about that, I get so overwhelmed and that voice comes from all different areas saying, you're not going to do it. You're not good enough. You know, maybe you miss misheard the Lord and, and all these different sort of conflicting messages. And that's what takes us further away from our relationship with God. But like you said, you just have to step forward. And I commend you for being honest. If my wife asked me that question, I probably wouldn't have said I was scared. I said, oh, my back hurts. You know, I don't, but, <laughs> but to be honest and and it's amazing. And and I, I agree. I definitely feel like the audience must have, have saw your, your spirit and your presence. But it's it's unfortunate that the next day or two days later that voice finds a way in, right? It's like that weed in the garden. It's always finding a way in. So so I mean, so now, okay, so let's say Esther, you know, now they're obviously they'd had other shows after Queen Esther, which I've s I didn't see the most recent one, but I did see uh Daniel. So what are you doing now? Now you're not in Lancaster, Pennsylvania anymore, which I'm 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 sad that you're not, but where are you now? So what is what sort of transpired from Queen Esther to to currently? So um, w after Esther, we did the show David, and David is all about being um, being a child of God and being a man or woman after God's own heart. And one of the prayers that they had um, after each show during David was, um, it was, Lord, if there's anything in me that is keeping me from you, that is keeping me you from your presence, reveal that to me. And so they would do that at the very end of the show. And I remember every day I had to take my costume from one side of the stage to the other. And I would hear the guy who was playing David, I would hear them say that prayer. And I would just be walking with my costume and be like, yes, Lord, reveal to me anything that is not, you know, like I'm praying the prayer. 
And I always tell people, well, be careful what you pray for because oh, yeah. the Lord will show you. Um, so during that time, uh, I'll, I'll kind of backtrack a little bit. Um, when I originally, when my husband and I first got married, I was like, I don't want kids. Absolutely not. We're not having kids. I want to focus on my career. I want to focus on all these things. I kind of believe this lie that our culture gives us that women's lives are over once they have children, mm -hmm. like your, your life stops and then you're a mom, you know? And I believe that it was, again, this fear-based mentality of, wow, well, I don't want to, I don't want to lose my career. I don't want to lose my, and, um, so I was just like, I don't want kids. And during that season of David, I was praying that prayer and the Lord one day, man, I, I audibly heard the Holy spirit. And it was, um, he said, why are you so closed off to having kids? And I go, uh, I wasn't <laughs> expecting that, <laughs> you know, I'm surrendering everything else, not that. And, um, and my answer was, you know, I'm scared, you know, I don't want to gain weight, you know, all of these things. Um, and the Lord said, well, whose plan are you on mm. my plan or your plan? Because if you're saying you're going to surrender everything to me, you need to surrender everything. Yes. And I was like, oh, okay. Um, and, the, and then I was like, well, what about what I'm doing now? What I love, what I'm singing and acting and, and creating music and art. And he said, don't you believe that I could do exceedingly more than you could ever ask or imagine? Why does it have to be one over the other? Why can't you believe that I'm a good God and I'm going to give you both of those things because that's what I've placed on your heart and in, in, in your spirit. And I go, okay, all right. And in that moment, I surrendered it to the Lord. Mm. It was that you, you read it in the Bible all the time. You know, this person's heart was changed in an instant. Mm -hmm. This person, you know, and, but, and I was like, yeah, yeah, that happens in the Bible. But in that moment, I felt it like for real. I surrendered it in a second. And immediately I went, I think I want a kid. <laughs> it was like, it was like this magic spell being cast. It was like, honestly, it was like this it was for someone. And you could, I mean, if you asked anyone, my friends, my family, they were like, my family actually had bets that I was going to, my husband, because they were like, who's going to have the first grandkid? And they're like, well, it's not going to be them because she doesn't, you know, and we're the first. So um, wow. that's just, the Lord changed my heart. So anyway, I ended up surrendering it. Went to my husband, always the supportive husband. I said, look, the Lord placed this on my heart. And he said, you'd be a great mama. That was it. And um, I wasn't expecting that response and uh, happened very quickly. And um I ended up having my baby boy named Israel wow. in, in July of last year. It's beautiful. And um, so honestly, what took me away from the stage, the, the Lord knew that, um, that I was being molded and shaped. I, I felt the Lord kind of calling me away from the stage prior to that revelation of wanting to have a child. And um, I thought it was for other reasons, but, you know, and, and it still could be those other things, but the Lord really was already preparing my heart for that. So, um, I knew that I, my time on stage, uh, was coming to an end for that season. And, mm -hmm. you know, one day it might happen again. Um, so then, um, after we had our, our baby boy, um, my husband was still working and, um, you know, acting and singing and, I came down in November of last year to visit family and I never went back. Um, we, we both discerned in our spirits that the Lord was calling us to take a huge leap of faith and move to San Antonio, Texas. Wow. Um, one for family, because our child has been such a blessing to his, his grandparents, his great grandparents, and then just the blessing of being around family. Um, and then another part of it was we felt, like there was some sort of ministry here. Like there was something that there was something more than just that that was calling us here. And we're still trying to figure out what that thing is. Um, but it really felt like the Abraham and Sarah moment of go to a new land and just leave everything. So my husband packed up the whole entire apartment, moved everything by himself. And I'm here with the baby. And it was like, we're crazy. We're crazy. <laughs> 
we have no potential jobs. Like we're just moving. We're just, what? This is crazy. I have always heard and admired people who could do that, who could just really be obedient to the Lord and just move. And I always thought like, wow, they're crazy. And then the Lord's asking me to do the same thing. And I felt like if we had gone on with what our plans were, we wouldn't be being obedient to the Lord. Exactly. So yeah, that's kind of what brought us to Texas. And, you know, I, um, as I've had this time of, of, of being a mom and being home with my, my child and the Lord has taught me so much through that, the little nuggets of, of, of what the Lord probably thinks of me as I'm taking care of my child. And, um, it's, it's been a time of reflection, reflecting on the past four years and doing Queen Esther, all of those things that I did and seeing the Lord's faithfulness through all of it. And, um, I've had some opportunities to sit and, and write music, music that, you know, I used to write when I was, I was younger. And then I just kind of stopped because I believed that lie. No one wants to hear it. And, um, the Lord just got a hold of me in this season of being, um, you know, home all the time with my child and having the time to just sit and write music and, um, has really placed this desire of glorifying him in everything that I do. And another one of those desires that he's placed on my heart is doing film. Um, you know, again, I don't know how the Lord's going to do it. I thought that with Esther too. I didn't know how the Lord was going to get me to do that role. Cause I did not feel qualified enough, but he paved the way and it proved to be him. So I know he'll do it again. Um, so yeah, we're just, we're sitting here and we're in the waiting season again, waiting on the Lord, being proactive and doing our due diligence to get better at our craft and, and, and really dive into our relationship with the Lord. But at the same time, it's all in his plan. It's interesting because like you said, there are, when I look at certain people that do just take that leap of faith, it does sort of, I reflect on that and say, am I obedient? Am I surrendering everything? Or am I sort of still have that backup plan? But it does teach us a lot during that season. So so now you're in San Antonio, which I do love Texas as well. And you're writing music. You're, you want to pursue acting, which I think is a fantastic idea. I mean, like I said, when I saw you in Esther, I mean, I think that even, to be honest, I think that was my favorite sight and sound performance I've ever seen from the acting to the, the the preparation to the scenes to everything. I mean, it was just an amazing show. So when you say about, you know, you want to pursue acting, give me a little bit more about that. Like, is that, are you focusing primarily on faith-based content? Like, what do you, where do you see yourself in this industry? Well, like I said, um, I know whatever I do, I want to do it for the glory of God. And I'm not saying that people who are in secular film can't do that same thing. I think there are certain kind of people that are called to do that. Um, but I know where I'm willing. I, I know the line for myself and where I'm, I'm not willing to compromise. And um, I know that Hollywood is kind of like getting a little crazy. Um, and um, so I really would love to pursue faith-based film, um, something that is encouraging something that is uplifting and it doesn't have to have like an in, like a direct theme of you know preaching you know the the lord and preaching christ and sharing that story but something that is based in that something mm -hmm. that is uplifting and um that is just it, it's kind of funny because i am a singer first so um when i originally uh, started in theater i was like wow, like all of these people are so qualified and I've never done theater before. Actually, when I started at Sight and Sound, I, had, I hadn't done anything professionally like that ever. Wow, and really? Oh, I would, yeah, have, I would I just, have never guessed, never guessed. <laughs> I just went because my husband is a huge musical theater like nerd. And he actually just, <laughs> he, he just, um, he just uh, interviewed for a, a theater teacher position. He just, he just loves theater. So um, he loves Phantom of the Opera and all of these things. And as I was dating, when we were dating, his family, they love musical theater too. And they would show um, every 4th of July, they would play 1776, the, the musical. And I was just like, oh, and it's a joke between me and his family because it's just, I'm like, oh, I can't sit <laughs> through this. Um, but yeah, so Sight and Sound was the first musical theater professional thing I'd ever done. I hadn't really acted before. I didn't take theater class in school. Um, I was mostly in choir and show choir. So this was really a change for me. Like stepping into Sight and Sound was so foreign. 
I was looking around at all these people who had gone to school for musical theater, for vocal performance, for acting, for all these things. I'm like, what am I doing here? This is crazy. And so it was just even more of a miracle to me that the Lord allowed me to do that Queen Esther role because I was just total. if you look on paper, I was not qualified to do wow. that. Um, and so as I, as I'm at Sight and Sound, I start falling in love with acting and just how you can tell these stories. I mean, Jesus was a storyteller. He was the master of storytelling and it kind of gives you a glimpse into being able to share these encouraging messages with people through art and, and acting and feeling that emotion. And, um, so that's what excites me about acting. And when we were able to do the live event for Queen Esther, we, we recorded it live. Um, we had moments of having those close up film moments that I just loved because I was able to show and have, feel those emotions and show those emotions in a closer way that you can't necessarily get um, being in the audience. You can't really see people's faces that well, unless you're in the very front row, but even then, um, there's just this subtlety to acting that's just being honest. And so I've just, I've fallen in love with that and I would love to get involved in um, faith-based films. Um, but I'm at the point where I know that the Lord has placed that desire in my heart. I want to be careful and surrender that every day and make sure that it's not me making that up for myself um, and just trusting that the Lord is going to put the right people in my path and, and prepare the table before me mm. for me to be able to use the talents that he's given me to glorify him and hopefully encourage other people. Um, you know, like, like I did with the role of Esther, I actually just had a young lady reach out to me this morning and tell me that her, her faith with the Lord, her, her relationship has been solidified through that show of queen Esther, because she saw how she was, courageous and bold and found her identity in the Lord. And it's just so cool that the Lord used the gifts that he put inside of me. He could have used anybody, you know, but in, in that season, he, um, it, it's just so cool. It, it's just so cool to watch the Lord's faithfulness through all of it. So yeah. it's so, it I'm is excited so encouraging. To see. It's yeah, so I'm encouraging to, to hear that. that. Yeah, I, I mean, I think, you know, there's there's a lot of, you know, big faith based companies like the Pure Flix and Lionsgate. There's so many kingdom. I mean, there's so many companies and so many producers and directors out there that I, I really uh, they should reach out to you directly. And if they haven't seen your work, I mean, I watched it on TV and I, I have the DVD in my closet. I mean, I've seen the performance. I mean, your performance in Queen Esther is amazing. And the way you, first of all, just performing on stage like that in front of that many people, that many shows is just a testament to your faithfulness, but also the the desire and the amount of work. You know, when I work on films and TV shows, you, you, you do a scene, you take a break. I mean, you're going straight through <laughs> that, singing for days on end and, and rehearsals. So it's a lot harder than, than what we do. We do film and, and television. So I really hope that people reach out to you. I mean, you know, like I'm going to call David A.R. White, just just him alone. I mean, how many films and productions that he does, like he should reach out to you. And just someone like that, that's constantly creating, you know, high end faith based content. I mean, Jessica, I really I really feel that someone will reach out to you because you are so talented. Sight and sound is so talented. And, and I think you're at a different season in your life where now you've completely surrendered over to the Lord. And like you said, you've discerned to know that this isn't just you that wants to, you know, perform or be famous. This is coming from, from the Lord Jesus Christ. So I really commend you for that. Thank you. Thank you. I see that God has you in, in the exact right position and this is the exact right time. And I feel that it will all work out. And I really do. I think doors will continue to open for you because your heart is in the right place. You're obeying the Lord. You've surrendered and you're doing this for the right intentions. And I think he'll continue to use you as a vessel as you pursue this career in acting or film and TV. Thank you. It's It's been a constant um, reminder to live in the joy of each day because we're not promised tomorrow. And, and I, the Lord took me on this journey of realizing that I am nothing apart from him. And I find my completeness in him. So anything else, you know, getting the role at Sight and Sound, film, you know, writing songs, all of that is just blessings and favor on top of that. The only thing that I should be finding my identity and my worth in 
and my completeness in is in God. And I think that as actors, as um, people who create art, we're always nitpicking and we're always looking towards the next thing. Like if I could just get here, then I'll be happy. If I could just get to do films, then I'll be happy and I'll feel like I, I made my difference and I did what I was supposed to do. And it, it really, it, like I felt with Queen Esther at one point, I got to where I thought the pinnacle was, this is the, the role that I'd been praying for. And I realized, wow, I still want more. Mm. I still want more of something else. You know, that's our flesh. It's, we're looking for the next thing. And I realized, man, nothing is going to satisfy me because it's, it's all worldly. And even, even church, even worshiping on, on, on a stage at church, like all of those things are fleeting. It's physical. But what does not fail and what does not go away is that faith in God and his, and his goodness. And so it's just practicing that joy of each day. Okay. I am complete in, in you, God. And I know that you're going to fulfill your promises and you're going to make a way, but I am so thankful for where I'm at right now. Exactly. It's joy. It's not happy, which is, is conditional, which comes and goes. It's it's the joy. No, you're right. It's not the worldly possessions, the money, because like you said, once you reach that level, that pinnacle, there's always something more, something more that we want, the flesh wants. But in a relationship with Jesus Christ, we're fulfilled just with that relationship. So Jessica, how can people get in contact with you? Like David, who I think should reach out to you. How could people reach out to you or do you have a website or some social media that you could share? Yeah, my social media uh, on Instagram is Jessica Nicole Maldonado. Um, and it it honestly is where I love to share um, what the Lord is doing day to day. Um, and um, I also have my email, Jessica Nicole Maldonado at yahoo.com. Um, but I, I am very hopefully, hopefully expectant for what the Lord is going to do. Um, through even your podcast, your show. Um, and I'm so honored that you um, are willing to support artists and as being an actor yourself, you know, it, it's so easy to get competitive and so easy to be like, oh, well, I'm, I'm holding my information and I'm just going to like help myself. But really as believers, as a body of Christ, like we should all be sharing in that because it is for the Lord's glory and not for our own. So oh, I just exactly. want to commend you in that. And thank you so much for allowing me to be on your show. Oh, no, it, listen, it's my pleasure. And, and you're right. When, when, whenever I meet somebody, I'm always like, the, the relationship is, it's not about me. It's about somebody that can sort of utilize that relationship. And it's not about me telling my story. It's about you sharing your story so you can impact somebody. Like you said, somebody reached out to you today. So just like you, I just want to be a vessel and, and I'm blessed. And I just before I got on, I was praying to God, just thanking him that he uses me and he trusts me. And like I said earlier, when when he trusts you and he uses you, it also for me, it comes with this great responsibility. Right. Like we know the passage and it, sometimes it can be <laughs> it can be very challenging and daunting. And but we continue to move forward because that's what we're called to do. So carry the cross. So Jessica, thank you so much for this opportunity. And like I said, I hope people like David and and there's so many, the Irwin brothers, Kendrick brothers, just someone reach out to Jessica. I can share the contact. You can reach out to her directly. But Jessica, I saw her on stage and, and really was impressed and amazed. And that's why we're sitting here four years later talking. So Jessica, thank you so much. Thank you, Craig. Guys, I hope you enjoyed today's episode of Walk in Faith. Always remember you have the ability to inspire and evangelize through your words and actions. God bless you.